So the question being asked is, is the government spraying toxic chemicals into the skies all over the world to stop global warming? This is a local news story on the chemtrails conspiracy theory. It's a good base for debunking chemtrails as it covers most of the elements and is fairly up to date. Everything I tell you here can be verified by checking the links I provide in the video description or in the article on ContrailScience.com. It's called geoengineering. There are lots of things called geoengineering. Spraying things out of planes is just one of them. None of these things have actually been done. And a growing movement of people say yes. They also say many of the illnesses you see today are a direct cause of what's happening in the sky. KMIR 6's Christina Pascucci investigates. Could a strange substance found by a southwest Arkansas man be part of a government test? They start out badly. This is a two-year-old news report from KSLA where the reporter misread the amount of barium in the sample by a factor of 100. The story has since been retracted, but it still crops up every week in chemtrail circles. Well, that's the question at the heart of a phenomenon called chemtrails, now getting widespread attention. Well, they say the government is dumping chemicals on us to control or manipulate the weather. Military aircraft flying through the region is dropping chaff, and obviously they're up there practicing. Now there's a few things being confused here. Chaff is a real thing. What the weatherman is talking about is real. But the video they're showing of the plane does not show chaff. It shows an aerodynamic contrail. Well, they won't confirm that, but I was in the Marine Corps for many years, and I'll tell you right now, that's what it is. People say the government is up there in airplanes spraying all kinds of chemicals. People believe in Santa. It doesn't mean Santa is real. It could be the biggest threat that we've ever experienced. Longtime Valley resident Melanie St. James says she moved to the desert from L.A. for the clean air. But in the fall of 2009, she noticed the desert sky looked different. Different to what? Different to the Los Angeles contrails? Contrails can look very different from place to place based on the traffic and the weather conditions. The white, heavy, white, long streaks start appearing in the air. I had a dry, burning respiratory system, lungs, bronchioles. Actually, my entire respiratory system almost swelled shut. So my question here is, why is it just you? Why isn't everyone having these symptoms? Why aren't thousands of children being sent home from school? And St. James believes that's due to chemtrails. When you and I grew up, these contrails naturally dissipated in a few seconds or perhaps a minute max. But these things expand, they grow bigger. Well, that's just wrong. Contrails can fade away quickly. They can also persist. They could also spread out to cover the sky. This has been known and understood for over 50 years. So when I look at there and I think of contrails, you're telling me are chemtrails. Yes, but a contrail would be dissipated by now. No. Contrails can last for several hours. They can spread out to form a layer of clouds. Look, it says so in the encyclopedia. This is of interest, not just in this country, but uh, European countries and frankly all over the world. Geoengineering is a deliberate changing of our Earth's climate to fight global warming. And this is what many claim to be the source, chemtrails. It's a combination of aluminum, barium, and strontium. Aluminum, barium, and strontium are all elements that are commonly found in the Earth's crust, particularly aluminum. So you find them in the air, the soil, and the water whenever you test them. Some say the government is spraying in our skies. In the end, it forms a sort of cloud layer that reflects the sun's rays away from the Earth and thus cools our planet. Well, we've seen these numbers of aluminum, barium, and strontium escalate several thousand percentage points. Several thousand percentage points. If that were true, we'd all be dead. Uh, just in the past 10 years, those numbers were not there before the trails were there. Actually, they were. The numbers that Michael Murphy has found for aluminum and uh, other elements in rainwater are basically the same as they've always been. Nobody has been able to find a source of the contamination of aluminum, barium, and strontium. The source is simply soil. Windblown dust contains lots of those elements. It gets in the water, it's in the air. To test their theory, Michael J. Murphy and his team headed to an organic farm on Maui. A public official on Maui, Hawaii, who, who got deeply concerned about this, acquired over 30 different rain tests, which reveal aluminum, barium, and strontium toxicity. No, they didn't. They found normal levels of aluminum, barium, and strontium, just the levels you would expect to find in the rainwater. Retired USDA biologist Francis Mangles says chemtrails, also known as geoengineering, are detrimental to our planet's future. It's probably one of the biggest threats that I can see. Mangles says soil tests have shown the act. You see those test strips? That's hydrogen O65, urine and saliva strips. It's marked in vitro only, meaning it's for testing liquids. Now watch how he uses it. 
actual pH of the earth's soil has changed, making it harder for farmers to grow food. Also, all he just sticks it in the mud. That's not going to work. He's using urine test strips, and he's using them wrong. Alzheimer's, which has been linked to aluminum, has skyrocketed. Here in Riverside County, Alzheimer's is up 260 percent. You can't dismiss an increase like that just saying it's better reporting. Yes, Alzheimer levels have increased, but aluminum levels have not, and there's no conclusive evidence linking the two. But geoengineer Ken Caldera says all this evidence towards some sort of theory is just a lot of hot air. The chemtrails folks are looking at ordinary jet contrails and imagining some kind of nefarious government conspiracy. All true. It's a pity, though, they didn't ask Ken how long a contrail should last, because he could probably have explained it quite well. I contacted Mary Bono Mack, as well as Senators Dianne Feinstein and Barbara Boxer, all of whom either did not respond or refused to comment. I also spoke with the EPA and the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. Both said they knew nothing of attempts to modify the weather. Weather modification actually goes on all the time with cloud seeding. What you're talking about is attempts to modify the climate. However, there are federal documents that specifically mention weather modification. By which they mean cloud seeding. In. While there's disagreement over whether geoengineering is being used to control our weather right now, though... Geoengineering is not cloud seeding. Cloud seeding is something you do to clouds to make them rain more. Both sides agree it could happen in the future. In the United States, there is no research program on geoengineering yet, although people like myself are trying to create a research program. Geoengineers say directly modifying our weather has a much more immediate effect than switching the world to alternate energies. And a process that will take a minimum of 50 years to perhaps 300 years to convert everyone to renewable energy. Therefore, anything that might result in a quick fix to the problem would be seriously considered. That's seriously considered, as in might be done in the future. It's hugely risky. Uh, it will likely negatively impact some people, but we might find ourselves in a situation where those risks seem worth taking. I'm Christina Pascucci for KMIR 6 News. And I'm Mick West at contrailscience.com.